I'm John Sawyer. I'm the director of the Pulitzer Center on Crisis Reporting, and we're about to have the, the last panel of the day. I wanted to take just a moment uh, first to, to say how, how much we appreciate the opportunity to be part of this. The Pulitzer Center is a, a nonprofit journalism organization, and, and we do 50 or 60 projects a year. We work with uh, all the major news media outlets. One of the more unusual things about our model in, in, in the five years that we've been doing this is that we try very hard to sustain engagement in the issues that, that we cover, that our journalists cover. And so we, we do a lot of what we call after marketing, that we, we, we take the journalist and the journalism, the issues that they're covering out to high schools, middle schools, uh, universities uh, across the country. And uh, we've done dozens of these, uh, probably 150 or 200 in the last couple of years. But what we've seen today is really what, what we have been aiming for uh, since we started doing the university engagement. And it's only possible because of the uh, commitment of the uh, School of Public Health and the College of Communication and John Simon's, uh, John Simon's Center on Global Health and Development and Boston University's uh, willingness, eagerness to, to sort of seize this opportunity uh, to bring uh, the expertise of multiple disciplines uh, to these big systemic issues that that affect us all and and that's that was our idea from the beginning that we could use the immediacy of journalism straight journalists straight back from the field to help be part of a, a discussion that brought together that kind of expertise the kind of expertise that that we've seen today so so we're we're thrilled to be doing this uh, we hope that this will be only the first of, of annual events like this and, and other opportunities for journalists to be on campus. Another part of the, uh, what we're calling sort of a campus consortium plus here at Boston University uh, is a, a fellowship with the Pulitzer Center uh, that is available to a student from the College of Communication or from the School of Public Health uh, each summer. And, and we've just decided on, on the first uh, fellow for this summer, Anna Tomasulo, who is here from the School of Public Health graduate student, Anna, you should stand, uh, who was selected by the, the faculty at, 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 both, at both institutions and will be working with us this summer, first in the Pulitzer Center's office in, in Washington and then in the field on, a, on an international reporting project uh, on global health that, that, that she'll work with us and with our journalists uh, to get out to the biggest possible audience. So we're, it's, it's, it's great. We're, we, as I say, we're very, very happy to be part of this. This discussion today uh, is proof to me of, of the need for this kind of exchange. We've had a very uh, frank conversation uh, from the perspectives of public health and from journalism. Um, we've had some examples of, of the kind of tension that all of us have experienced who have been out in the field covering these sorts of events of a journalist uh, searching for the dramatic, for the individual story, and sometimes skewing policy, sometimes skewing uh, representations of, of what those in the public health community uh, might see as the, as the bigger issues to be covered in terms of educating the public. Uh, we've also seen in the, in the wonderful uh, short film that Sam Kaufman showed us uh, from, from Rwanda at, at lunch of, of what happens when there's not media coverage, that there's, that there's an equal and graver uh, risk on the other end. And, and so the importance of all of us uh, finding ways that we can utilize uh, all of our talents to, to, get this, to get this information out in a way that properly engages the public and leads to, to public and international responses. The panel, uh, this, the, the last panel is on the what happens after the initial trauma when the when the networks and the cable news shows and the big media have moved on to the next disaster how do, how do you sustain interest in 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 the specific uh, place event uh, disaster that, that that brought coverage in the first place and and that's true not only for for uh, the traumatic incidents like haiti's earthquake but also on sort of chronic daily disasters and i'm thinking of water and sanitation, that, that the, the lack of, of clean water and access to basic sanitation, you know, claiming 4,500 lives every day, that, that doesn't get the kind of coverage that an event like Haiti does. How do, you, how do you find ways to get that into the media? How do you work with, with experts in the field to tell that story? On, on Haiti, uh, several of the speakers this afternoon, this morning, have, have talked about 
You know, one of the, the great ironies and, and tragedies of, of, of the Haiti earthquake was that it came at a, at a moment when there was a lot that was good. Kwame Dawes talked about the, uh, the progress that had been made on HIV AIDS. And, and we, in the Pulitzer Center, we had done oh, half a dozen projects on, on Haiti over the past four years. And, and ironically, we had one of those was aired on NewsHour the night before the earthquake. And it was a piece, a 10, 12 minute piece, all about positive developments in Haiti, that Haiti seemed to be turning a corner, and that, that many people working in Haiti for a long time thought that, that there was a reason for hope in Haiti. And then, of course, the next day, the earthquake came. And as Kwame said, we, we then decided at the Pulitzer Center that we, would, we wanted to have, you know, what, what could we do to, to keep coverage? And we weren't so much interested in going down immediately, because we knew that would get covered, but how to sustain coverage over months and months and, and years to come. So we ended up commissioning five different projects, uh, looking at everything from education and HIV AIDS to the role of faith and religion uh, and the environment, the sustainability of reconstruction efforts. Uh, and we put together, we, we, you know, this is all, you know, another, and, yeah, I'm sorry, I missed one, another one on the marginalization of Haitians living across the border in the Dominican Republic. And these, these were different sets of journalists, and some of them were poet journalists in the case of, of Kwame Dawes. And, and they, their work appeared in, in multiple outlets over the course of the year. And then at the end of the year, uh, in this new, more collaborative era that we are now entering in, in journalism, we were able to work with USA Today and, and NewsHour to, to do a joint series uh, calling attention to all of this work. And so there were four pieces on, in USA Today and, and two in, in NewsHour, and then brought people to the website, we hope, where they would see things like Kwame's Voices of Hope, uh, and the piece that he and Andre Lambertson did on people living in Haiti after the earthquake. We'll follow the same order that we did on the other panels that I'll introduce each of the panelists and have them come to the podium and, and, and do their presentations and then we'll go to the next. And then we'll have a discussion afterwards. Thank you all.